Hey everyone, and welcome back to r slash Entitled People. It's time for more Reddit stories, so be sure to like and subscribe, and we're getting right into it. She tried to extort a baby from me, but ended up helping me keep the baby. This happened way, way back. My daughter is 30 now. When I was 18 and in my first year of college, I got pregnant. The father joined the Navy to escape responsibility. My parents, who are strict conservatives, except when it's inconvenient, abandoned me and cut me off financially. They wanted me to have an abortion to prevent the loss of my scholarship. That's how I found myself at 18 suddenly and totally responsible for myself in my living situation, with no financial or emotional support from anyone. I lived at a private dorm and was befriended by the property manager. When I told her my situation, she swooped in like a hero and helped me get a place to stay at one of the other properties she managed. I was getting evicted from the dorm. She then helped me get a job at a gift shop at one of those properties. I thought she was the most wonderful person for all of this, until her true motives became clear. She wanted to adopt my baby, even though I had expressed no interest in giving my baby up for adoption. After a few weeks of work, she launched a campaign to convince me I was unfit to be a mother, and that my baby would be so much better off if I let Donna have it. At first, it was subtle. Passive-aggressive remarks about how much money she and her husband had, how she couldn't have children herself, how she hoped she was able to adopt one day, and what a wonderful life they would give their baby. But as time passed, her approach became more aggressive and direct. She was always around the shop, and would even come to my apartment, ready to point out things I did, or didn't do, that proved what a terrible mother I would be. She went into long rants about how awful I was for having a baby without a father, how we'd be welfare trash forever, how God brought her into my life because she was meant to have my baby. It was endless and constant for months. Sometimes I let her comments upset me and make me wonder if she was right, but in my heart I knew that I'd be a good mother. For a while and feeling intimidated, I let myself be bullied into including her in baby-related events. I even let her go with me to the sonogram, where I found out my baby was a girl. She was so excited, quote, for me. As I got closer to delivering, I got stronger in making clear to Donna that I was not giving up my baby. I tried to avoid Donna as much as I could, but was regularly reminded how much power she had over my living situation. I soon had coworkers telling me she was claiming that my baby's adoption was a done deal. She even told people she was decorating a nursery and buying baby girl clothes. When it became clear that she was not going to change my mind, she started threatening me with eviction from my apartment and firing me from my job. That way I'd realize how unstable my situation was and recognize I had no business having a baby. And sure enough, I lost my job. She fired me for not wearing my shoes behind the cashier's counter at the gift shop. When I was on my feet all day, my feet would swell right out of my shoes. I'd stay behind the counter and slip off my shoes for a bit, but never in view of the customers. Still, that was reason enough in Donna's mind to teach me a lesson. It didn't take long after losing my job to also lose my apartment. I ended up couch surfing and even spent some time homeless until I got some housing assistance. In the meantime, I had gone to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and complained, and they helped me mediate with the owners of the gift shop property. As a result, Donna got fired from managing that property, and I got months of back pay and some extra money for my trouble in exchange for not full out suing them. The small cash windfall turned out to be a huge blessing that actually enabled me to survive financially until I had my baby and could get back in school. Donna firing me was the best thing that could have ever happened. I saw her years later and she was still childless. Best revenge. My daughter is now getting ready to graduate. Full scholarship and magna cum laude from a top law school. Turns out being raised by a single mom is not as awful as Donna thought. Now that is some real manipulative and sinister sh** right there. Wanting a baby so bad that you find someone that's down on their luck, so you help them just to try to get them to give up their baby to you. And when you find out it's not going to work, you just dump them out on the street? Man, I don't even want to know what this baby's life would have been like if she actually gave it up to her. But it's awesome that her craziness actually indirectly helped OP in the end. The groom betrayed his best man and fiancé in one night and ruined his wedding. So for context, I work at a pretty large and fancy resort that hosts a lot of big weddings throughout the year. As you'd probably expect from a place like this, we tend to see drama every once in a while. 
and this is one such tale that I pieced together through various encounters and gossip from other co-workers and other departments, so it's not exactly perfect. So it's the middle of the summer, and like usual there was a wedding happening over the weekend. While I never met many of the guests from the wedding party, I heard bits and pieces, such as the fact that the bride was this beautiful woman from a relatively wealthy family who had paid for pretty much all the wedding, while the groom wasn't so much. Whoever the groom was, it was clear he was going to be a very lucky man after the wedding, as long as nothing bad happened. So the day of the wedding comes, and a mere five hours before the wedding is scheduled to happen, the wedding is called off. Why? Because the very night before the wedding, the groom was caught in bed with one of the housekeepers, and the bride found out. This led to a massive fallout the next day, with relatives getting at each other's throats, and just all in all terrible stuff. What's more is that the same night, the groom and his best man were having drinks at one of the bars and racked up a $200 tab that they agreed to split at the beginning. The groom suddenly dropped the bomb that he didn't have the money and left the best man to pay for it all. I'm not sure exactly how bad the situation was, but it was apparently bad enough to the point where it evolved into a fist fight between the two that had to be broken up by security. I was working that day outside at a pool bar and was introduced to the madness when a random drunk woman stumbled into our bar somehow. Literally, no joke, she entered through our bar's door, stumbled past our liquor room, and was now standing between two very confused bartenders, who up until that point had just been chatting about random stuff before she was let out. There were even guests who noticed the chaos and were asking what the heck was going on. It was just a terrible mess and a waste of a good wedding. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised that people cheat, but the fact that this guy not only decided to do it the night before his wedding to a woman who had beauty and money, who I assume is a dream for a lot of people, but he did it with a total stranger too, and right after he bailed on his best man. It's such a scummy thing for someone to do, and honestly, I hope the bride found someone better. Yeah man, the bride-to-be totally dodged a bullet there. That's honestly the best thing that could have happened for her. Rather than actually getting married that day, and then actually having to deal with this piece of work of a husband. Entitled person is arrested for attempted horse theft. So for this story, OP has a whole mess of acronyms for the people involved, but don't worry about that. I'll instead explain them as we go through the story. I was at a horse show with a bunch of kids and our horses. I had just finished riding my course, and I was cooling out my horse, who was called Hell Horse, after a very fast time. I rode by our trailer to check on everyone to see R without the pony I left her to hand graze. R is a rider who adores Vel, but does not know much about the horse world, and Vel is a black velvet horse, our horse napping victim. I do a quick scan to see if I can see Vel with another rider, but I don't, so I trot over. Where's Vel, R? A mean lady said it was her turn with Vel. R's mother responds with, She came over and said you told her to take Vel. What? What was her name? I ask. She didn't give one. She said it's normal to trade horses, but she didn't leave one here. Where did she go, I asked. To the trailer field. Oh, that's her, said R. I turn and see a lady in a red Ford and two-horse trailer driving for the exit. I see Vel's butt and the ribbon we tied on her tail. I yell for someone to call the police and whip around and canter after the truck to flag her down. She sees me and gasses it. Now this farm's show was in the back of the facility, and she had to go down a dirt road before getting to the gate of the farm. Then she would quickly get to a major road. I send my horse on the grass and let her open up, speeding past the truck and reaching the gate first. I bring my mare to a halt and wait, expecting the woman to give up. The gate was chained open for the show traffic, and I couldn't get off in time to fight with the lock. I expect the lady to give up, and nope. Her truck goes into another gear as she's about to barrel over us. My horse jumps away, nearly sending me to the ground in front of the truck, which cuts into traffic and barrels on. A police officer saw my stunt and starts flashing for me to stop. I'm now seeing red and ride after the trailer on the shoulder, trying to get the license plate. A state trooper saw this shit show and cut in front of the trailer, making it stop. The entitled person jumps out of the car, screaming, I threatened her, and she was scared for her life. You stole our horse, I said. Dismount and show me your hands, said the police. She threatened to kill us, said the entitled person. Lady, drive into the McDonald's parking lot and park. Miss, on the horse, can you move further to the grass? Officer, get the traffic moving again, said the state trooper. Why aren't you listening? 
asked the entitled person. I need to see your license and registration. The entitled person begins making excuses as Vel begins kicking and squealing. The trooper goes to Vel looking at her. Is this your horse? asked the trooper. Yes, entitled person and me said. Do you normally ship in full tack like this? asked the trooper. Um, I was in a hurry. My daughter is sick. We need to go to the doctor, said entitled person. I've called for an ambulance already. Now what is the horse's name? Um, we call her Polly, the entitled person said. Then I say, her name is Black Velvet Rose. There is a nameplate on her saddle, bridle, and in gold letters on her ribbon. The trooper saw the saddle and ribbon before looking at me. Do you have documents? Yes, back at the farm we left, I said. You just put those things on, her name is Polly, said entitled person. Ma'am, could you have gotten the wrong horse by accident? Asked the trooper. No, said entitled person. I got my vel back and we waited for a trailer, as the woman was arrested for horse theft. Coworker complains to boss about me because she is ignoring me. A bit of backstory. Nearly two weeks ago, I, a 31-year-old female, was at work, doing my thing, but running a bit behind with a task, so I was rushing about trying to get it done. Now my coworker, N, does not like being ignored or told no at all. Anyway, while I was running around like a headless chicken, N comes up to me and says that she wants me to look at something. I said that, unfortunately, I can't right now, but I can later. Just want to note that she had found some old piece of paperwork and wanted to show me how old the date was. N kept telling me it wouldn't take long and that I should follow her. I flat out told her, no, I have my own work to do and I'm busy. She pulled a face but let it go. Or so I thought. Since that day, she hasn't said a word to me. If I ask her to do a task, she just stares at me and walks off. If I say good morning or hello to her, same deal. A grown-ass woman in her 40s, giving me the silent treatment. Cue today, I don't even bother trying to talk to her, because I know she won't respond. So I ask another coworker to ask her to do a task that needs done. And what a surprise, because I didn't ask her, it gets done. As I was leaving work, my boss asked to speak to me, and asked me what's up with N. So I told them what happened and my boss knows that even if I'm slightly behind, I like to get stuck in and get caught up even if it can wait. I asked why they wanted to know and I was told that N had complained about me and that I was, quote, creating a hostile work environment for her. I asked my boss how her ignoring me was me creating a hostile environment. That question went down as well as expected. I was asked to hang back a bit while they spoke to her. I made sure I was nowhere near the offices, so I couldn't be accused of eavesdropping. She was pulled into the office and asked why she made the complaint. And according to my boss, she repeated that I was being hostile to her, even when it was pointed out that I was still talking to her like normal. It took a while, but she eventually admitted she was giving me the silent treatment as punishment because I told her no and she doesn't like being told no. Boss told her to grow up and start acting her age, or she will be pulled into the office again and have a formal meeting. And those are scary. N slinked out of the office and back to work, and I headed home. That is it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Drop a like on the video if you made it this far, it really helps me out. And also subscribe if you haven't already. So I'm out of here, everyone. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you next time.